Welcome to another episode of Izzy Video. My name is Israel Hyman. As you can see, I have a light here in the frame with me and I'll get to that here in a second, but first I want to review a concept. The concept is, the bigger the light source, the softer the light. You've heard me say it several times in the past in other video tutorials, but if you're a new member, maybe this is the first time you're being introduced to this. Now, what I'm referring to is the relative size of your light source. Incidentally, you can tell whether or not the light source is hard or soft by looking in the frame, looking at the image, and looking particularly at the shadows, and specifically at the edge of a shadow. So if, for example, there were a shadow on my face here, and it had a very hard edge to it, not much of a transition, but a hard edge to the shadow, that would indicate that we're using a hard light. Now, I'm not using a hard light, I'm using a softer light right now, which is why you don't see a hard edge to the shadow, you see more of a soft transition. Well, it turns out that a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people look better under a soft light source. So it's a valuable thing to know how to take a hard light source and make it soft. Now, the reason why I gesture towards this light when I say hard light source is because this, because it's a smaller light, will create a hard light. If I use this to light me, it, you'll see hard shadow edges and it'll create a harder, a harder light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Lowell DP light and I'm gonna modify it a number of different ways. I'll show you several different ways to take a hard light and make it soft. Let's go ahead and get started. What you're looking at right now is what I look like when we're using the Lowell DP light as the only light source on me. And you can tell that it's a very hard light source once again by looking at the shadows, particularly at the shadow here on the other side of my nose. You'll notice that it has a very hard edge to the shadow. That indicates we're dealing with a hard light. But one of my favorite places to look to find out what kind of a light source somebody's using is the chin shadow. You'll notice that the shadow here underneath my chin has a very hard edge. That indicates that we're dealing with a hard light source. Now, I don't want you to pay so much attention to the way everything else in the frame looks. I mean, believe it or not, I've, I'm still, I haven't changed anything else. The background is still the same even though it's significantly darker. Before it was a lighter color, now it's almost black and over here it's blacker, and then you have these harsher shadows that are deeper. Well, the reason, I'm, I'm not talking about the deepness of the shadows, how dark the shadow is. You control that with the fill. Like, a, you can have a hard light source, but then put a reflector here to fill in the shadows a little bit. I just want you to pay attention to the edge of the shadows here as I show you the effect of different types of modifiers as we work with this Lowell DP light. I want you to remember what this looks like, though. This is definitely a hard light source. One of the easiest things you can do if you just want to soften the light a little bit, in other words, not make it dramatically softer, but just soften it up a little bit, is you can increase the relative size of the light by putting some diffusion paper in front of it. Now, this is a diffusion paper. Sometimes you hear it called frost or opal or diffusion gels, a lot of different names for it. What I like to do and what a lot of people do is they just use a clothespin like this and they attach it to the barn doors like this. There you go, make it very easy, and then I'll also bring that in a little bit and do it on this side. Okay, and then once I have it attached, what I wanna do is, is open it up as much as I can here, and then I'm gonna bring in this top flap to help reduce spill light that's coming out of the top and also out of the bottom. And what I've done is I've taken a smaller light source and just made it a little bit bigger, and that's gonna soften it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, by the way, this uh, material is heat resistant. You don't wanna just put any kind of diffusion material. It needs to be specifically for this. These lights get very hot, and this close, you could catch something on fire. So this stuff's built for this type of thing. I'm gonna take this light, I'm gonna put it over here and illuminate myself with it so you can see the impact of just adding this little bit of diffusion material. Here I am under the DP light and it has diffusion paper in front of it. It's slightly softening the light. You'll notice if you look at the chin shadow that it's still a pretty hard edge, but it's not as hard as it was before when there was no paper on it. It's a slightly softer edge to the shadow, indicating that the light source is slightly softer than it was before. Now, one thing I wanna point out is you'll notice that on the background, there's already some spill light that's starting to show up and spill light is is light that's spilling into other areas that you don't necessarily want it to go, and that's a whole different episode. But one of the things I do want to point out is that soft light is harder to control, so as we soften the light more and we try different methods of softening the light, you're gonna see there's all kinds of spill light that appears on the background, and we're just starting to see hints of it now. Another method for softening the light is to use a reflector board or a white board like this. This is just a foam core board that I picked up at a hobby store for a couple dollars, and then I attach it to the C-stand using one of these Matthews plates like this. Anyway, what you do is you just aim it towards your subject. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, put it over here, aim it towards me. This is gonna be the light source, and then off to the side, I'm gonna have my DP light that's reflecting onto the board 
shining onto the board and then the light is going to reflect off the board and onto me. And because this is a larger light source than this, this will give me a softer light. Let's see what it looks like. This is what I look like when we're bouncing light from the DP light onto the white foam core board and then onto me. So this white foam core board, because it's significantly bigger than the light itself, you'll notice it's a much softer light. Look at the edge of my chin shadow. You can see that it's more of a gradual transition between shadow and the rest of the area. So yeah, we've definitely softened the light quite a bit. And also by softening it, we've created even more spill light, which you're seeing on the background. Now I'm not doing anything to try to control spill light right now. So I'm just gonna let it keep brightening in the background. Right now, I just want you to pay attention to the shadow's edges so you can see what soft light looks like as we go through the different methods of softening a hard light source. The next method I wanna show you uses a diffusion panel. Now this is specifically a scrim gym from Westcott but the more generic term for this is a diffusion panel. And as you can see, it's basically just a frame with the fabric on it. This fabric Velcro's on, as you can see here. Now you can swap the fabrics out. This one's a diffusion type of fabric, meaning that light can go through it and become diffused. So it's sort of translucent. You can see through it a little bit. Now I could, if I want to, I could take this off and put on a reflector fabric. Now if I did that, what I would do is I'd put the reflector up and then I would take the light, bounce it off the reflector and onto me, similar to what I would do with a foam core board. But I'm not going to do that for this because I've already shown you how to do it with a foam core board. And so you get the idea of bouncing the light and using a reflector. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on a stand and I'm going to use the diffusion fabric that you see here. I'm going to put a light on the other side, shine it on this fabric and try to illuminate as much of it as I possibly can to create a big light source Ideally, so it'll create a really nice soft light on me. Let's see what it looks like. This is what I look like with the diffusion panel here. The light's on the other side of it, illuminating this larger panel, and that's what's illuminating me. And the light's punching through the fabric, and that's a phrase you'll hear people use every once in a while. They'll talk about punching the light through a fabric, and that's what they're referring to. Diffusion panel or diffusion fabric like this. Okay, so I wanna show you what this looks like, but before I do that, pay attention to the shadow here underneath my chin. You'll notice that it's definitely a more gradual edge to the shadow. Now let me show you the setup. All right, so you have to bear with me because I'm doing this all myself today. And let's go ahead and look at the light here. Let me back it out just a little bit here. You can see that I've got the light there and it's shining on that panel and the panel becomes the new light source and that was what was illuminating me. It gives me that nice soft light. Of course, the challenge of this kind of setup is that the light goes everywhere. You have no control over the spill, hardly at all. You have to put flags up all over the place if you're going to use this method. Usually one of my favorite ways to soften a light is using a softbox like this one. The way that it mounts onto the light is usually there's a speed ring that you have to fit onto your light fixture. Now what I did is I took my barn doors off so that I could put the speed ring on here. That's what this blue ring is here that you can see. And then the softbox has these rods that go right into the speed ring and that's how you mount it onto your light. Now, it works very similar to the diffusion panel that I showed you previously. It's got a fabric here on the front. You shine the light into the fabric and that creates a large, soft light. Well, the thing that I like about this, though, over a diffusion panel is it's a lot easier to control. You can aim it. Basically, you can take your soft light and aim it the way you want it to go. Also, it's got walls around it. As you can see, it's like a container. It contains the light and directs it forward through the diffusion fabric. So if I can, I try to use soft boxes as much as possible. Now it happens that this is a small soft box that I'm using for this right now. So it's actually a little bit smaller than the diffusion fabric was that I showed you in a previous shot. So the light on this isn't gonna be as soft as you saw before with the diffusion panel, but it's still gonna be a nice soft light. I'll show you what it looks like. This is what I look like with the soft box shining light on me. And as you can see by my neck shadow, there is a slightly gradual transition indicating that I am using a soft light. However, it's not the softest light I've used in this video because this is only three feet by two feet here and my four foot by four foot diffusion panel was much bigger. So naturally that's gonna create a softer light. There are much bigger soft boxes that you can use. The biggest one I have is six feet tall, but I couldn't really work with that inside the frame today. That's more something that has to happen off camera. Anyway, there's one more thing that I wanna bring up too, and that is that in a pinch, if you need to, you can take a light that, and just shine it on the ceiling or shine it on a white wall or something like that to create a large light source, a reflected light source that will create a soft light for your subject. Now, of course, what you give up is the ability to really control that light. It's gonna be very challenging to control it, but in a pinch, that might be something to keep in mind. 
I've talked to you about and shown you several different methods to take a hard light source and turn it into a soft light today. Hopefully this information is helpful and I'll see you next time on Izzy Video.